solidly, solidly in the top four for sure. Clemson at number two, and then Ohio State still at number one for me. They're still undefeated. And when I look at these teams in my top four, if they were to go head to head, how I'm ranking my teams right now, if they go head to head, Ohio State beats the other three teams in my top four. Whew. All right, I'm going to go Alabama at number four. The reason I don't have them higher, there has to be some sort of penalty for losing in the regular season. I might even say Bama would beat all the three teams in front of them, but I still think you have to hold that against them, the regular season loss. Number three, I have Baylor. I haven't moved them out yet. They have a huge test this weekend against Oklahoma. Number two, I have Clemson. That signature win against Florida State looks like they could cakewalk into, that national, into the playoff. And then number one, I have the defending national champion, Ohio State Buckeyes. There's Danny's four. Kirk, how are your four stack up? Well, I'm, I'm one of those guys that looked over and over and over at that number four spot, and, and I debated between teams like uh, you know, Baylor, uh, Notre Dame, and Oklahoma State after what Oklahoma State did against TCU. So I, I moved Oklahoma State all the way up uh, to that number four spot. Uh, so I have them at number four. I have Ohio State at number four. On the board, and look how the Iowa Hawkeyes have moved at least into the top six. Iowa was ninth last week. Baylor, Iowa both undefeated. Notre Dame, who was sitting in fifth a week ago. Strength of schedule does not favor anyone except Notre Dame. Iowa has a couple of wins against the top 25, the current committee rankings. How would you stack these up? Real quick, real quick <laughs> prediction, quick one. You look at them here, I think you have Notre Dame, Iowa, Baylor at six. I mean, according to these. And I agree, I go Notre Dame, Iowa, and then Baylor. That's what these guys think, so let's go back and see how it looks. The number four team, according to the College Football Playoff Selection Committee, the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame. They move up and in to the top four at the moment. Still a huge game coming down the road at the end of the season at Stanford. The first two teams out, five and six. You saw the resume. Iowa continues to ascend quickly, and now... Kirk Ferentz's team is just one spot out of the playoff, and Baylor still sits at number six. And there, the committee clearly is taking a wait-and-see approach on Baylor. The Bears have yet to play anybody with a winning record. Art Bryles is going to join us later on in this college football playoff top 25 show. So Notre Dame moves up. Iowa makes the big jump. What do you think about what the committee did with Iowa, Kirk? Well, you know, their, their fan base maybe got a hold of, uh, of the committee because they have, they'll probably leapfrog Iowa and possibly Notre Dame. But, I mean, it all is in front of us. But kudos to the committee. I actually applaud them for rewarding a team for running the table, regardless of their schedule at hand. We have their key wins right there. They should add Northwestern to that because they've already beat Northwestern as well. So Iowa has done the job. All they've done is win. That's all that should matter. And you talked about Baylor and, and TCU and the Big 12 feeling disrespected in last week's poll. Think about Baylor staying put at number six where they were. Oklahoma State makes a jump, but only to number eight. And that's where TCU was. It's almost like that's the level for the Big 12 right now. And Baylor sitting undefeated has now been jumped by a team that was at nine. So if they felt disrespected last week, they definitely feel disrespected even more so this week with their undefeated team being jumped. If you look at strength of schedule, strength of record metrics, Iowa, Oklahoma, Oklahoma State, all about the same. Iowa's a little bit below, uh, below them. It's just a few spots. It's negligible when it's that close. Uh, what is it about the Hawkeyes, you think, other than just being perfect, what is it about the football judgment? Playoff Selection Committee, Jeff Long. So, Jeff, let's start with the jump by Iowa. If you start looking at some of the metrics, the strength of schedule, you could make a, an argument that maybe Stanford uh, is, is a better pick. O Oklahoma State has a huge marquee win now beating TCU. What was it that the Selection Committee valued about Iowa? Well, first let me say, five through eight was where we spent the majority of our time debating and discussing and voting. Uh, Iowa, for us, for the committee, they've, uh, they've shown consistent improvement. They've uh, shown consistency on both sides of the ball. While they've not been flashy, they have been solid on both sides of the ball. And, you know, they've got a couple uh, road victories in the Big Ten that are impressive. And so, and they have the overall strength of schedule. Uh, for the undefeated teams, they're, they have a higher uh, uh, strength of schedule other than Clemson, the number one team. So I think that's what helped propel Iowa above the others in that five through eight range. Well, when you mentioned the five through eight range and most of the time and the discussion spent there, give us a sense of, I guess, how many of the 12 guys would have to change their minds just a little bit for this thing to, to look totally upside down to give people 
a better understanding of, of what close means among five through eight? Yeah, it, it wouldn't take much to um, change the, that order there. I mean, it, it is very close. Um, we had uh, revotes in that area. So I would say that that area really is, after considerable debate and uh, review and discussion, probably the, uh, the area that's most volatile. So um, upcoming uh, opportunities for those teams really will make a great difference. How, close, uh, how closely is the committee evaluating and what's their response to the backloaded schedule in the Big 12 and the gauntlet that the teams like Baylor and Oklahoma particularly, all of them play each other, I understand, but those two play them three weeks in a row. What kind of weight uh, do you anticipate the committee placing on the backloaded Big 12 schedule and how it could elevate some of those teams? Yeah, that's where the majority of the uh, Big 12 strength of schedule lies. It lies at the end of the season, so it's really hard to judge those teams. Um, you know, at this point in the season, that's why uh, I think you see uh, Baylor staying where they were even though they won a game. Their strength of their schedule is still in front of them, so they still have opportunity. But I will tell you that uh, the committee has a difficult time evaluating those teams who have not had uh, significant victories, haven't won games over uh, better than 500 record teams. So that, that does create a difficulty for the committee in ranking at this point in time. Notre Dame has several such victories. How would you describe uh, the first start for Jared Stidham? And it turned out just fine. Built a big lead against Kansas State, held on 31-24, and the Bears are undefeated as they head into their showdown this weekend at Waco against Oklahoma. College game day will be there for that one on Saturday night. We're pleased to be joined by the head coach of the Bears, Art Bryles. Art, what's your reaction? Your team stayed steady at number six. You know, it's kind of about what we figured. You know, I mean, it's like I say, it's still early in the process. Uh, you know, we understand that our schedule is really backloaded, so we, we're going to have a chance to to make some noise. But it's uh, we're going to have to work for that noise too. I mean, we got us a tough road ahead, but you know, we're tough out too. So that's that's what makes college football so great. I mean, that's why people pay money, sit in the stands, and holler because you're not really sure what's going to happen. I imagine there'll be a lot of people hollering uh, come Saturday night. What, what do you think of the backloaded schedule? And, uh, and some of it probably worked out perfectly. Oklahoma State has uh, performed above the expectations of many. What's your reaction to the conference basically playing all of its significant games in a very short period of time? You know, I mean, I guess it's pretty good marketing. You know, I mean, I don't, it's, it's kind of taking a chance on really thinking how teams are going to, you know, come out as the season goes along. You're not really ever sure what's going to happen, but it's, it's just kind of worked out, I think, the way the conference thought it would. And, and fortunately, you know, we're, we're still standing there. You know, we're one of the three or four standing, and, you know, these next three or four weeks will determine uh, certainly our fate. And the great thing about it is, is that we're in control of our fate. So that's, that's the good part. And what are the challenges, Art? You're going to play the other three contenders in the conference in a span of 13 days with a short week coming up at the end. What type of challenges does compressing it that much present to you? Uh, you know, I don't know if challenges are the, is the right word, Reese. You know, I think it's just, you know, it, it, is, it is what it is. I mean, we're football players. We're football coaches. I mean, we grind, we go, we try to improve. You try to find ways to win. You, you fight for each other and then you try to have a victorious locker room. So that's, that's just part of the game, you know, and that's, that's what makes it so great is that all these guys have the same vision, same goals, same aspirations about making our team great and giving us a chance to get in the Final Four. It's a great game this weekend coming up against Oklahoma. Your freshman quarterback, Jared Stidham, is going to get his second career start. What's the biggest difference between a quarterback uh, finally getting to play a full game that was his, tough environment on the road, and then coming into his second start. What, what difference have you seen in him? You know, uh, first of all, Seth made it back today, so we're really happy to have him back. You know, he kind of bought the car, and we're going to drive it home for him. But, you know, Stidham uh, having that game under his belt, especially going into an environment like at Kansas State up there, I mean, that's, that's a tough environment. Coach Snyder and them do a great job. And, and to go in there and play as well as he played, I mean, now we're back home. I mean, from where I'm sitting, we can walk to where we're going to play Saturday night. It's going to be a great atmosphere, and people are going to be cheering for us. So it's, it's a whole different deal. And uh, he, got, he got his feet wet, and I don't expect him to be dried off anytime soon. <laughs> You've had great success in recent years against Oklahoma. How do you compare what you see from the Oklahoma teams in recent years with the one that you'll face on Saturday night? You know, they're just always good, Reese. I mean, they they got a great program historically, and that, that, that certainly has not altered any over the, 
the last few years. So I mean, we just know what we're getting. Anytime you get into these Big 12 games, you know, anything can happen. It's a tough league, and there's a lot of talent in the league, and, and they've certainly been, you know, one of the four, forefront runners over the years. So we understand the level we've got to play at, and, and that's that's really our goal. You know, we know what it takes to excel. This is one of those games where you got to really excel. All right, we look forward to seeing you this weekend. Uh, good luck the rest of the way, and thanks for being with us. Hey, it's, it's going to be fun. Be a blackout Saturday night in Waco, Texas. Come on. All right. I'm on my way, my friend. We'll see you in a bit. All right. <laughs> Let's go. All, All right. right. Art Bryles, the head coach at Baylor, joining us here on the college football playoff. Top 25, the Bears sitting on the outside looking in at the moment. But as Coach Bryles mentioned, so many big marquee opportunities coming down the stretch for the reigning Big 12 champions, reigning Big 12 co-champions, along with TCU. Paul Feinbaum joins us now. Paul, you were all upset about Baylor's position in the rankings last week. Are you still as upset about the Bears sitting at number six? Reese, I'm actually more upset this week. Uh, <laughs> Coach Bryles is fairly calm, but yeah, I started thinking about it like everyone else, and, and Oklahoma State, to me, should have been in the top four. They have one of the most impressive wins of this college football season over TCU. TCU started the season number two. I realize they've come backwards a little bit. But I don't know how you put Oklahoma State eighth. Baylor at six. I realize that they're, they're going to move up with a win over Oklahoma. And where in the world does this committee come up with Iowa at number five? I, I, that, the logic of that just completely uh, has lost me. I'm sorry. So, Danny and, and Joey, you guys were both in, in support of Iowa at number five. What do you think about what Paul said? He said he's. He I mean, I think, I think, the, I think if the, you look at the committee, fans are conditioned to the old poll system where there, there's a large number of voters sure. 65 and one, over 100 in the other one. You're talking about 12 guys in there. And Jeff Long alluded to this, Joey. It wouldn't it, the Five through eight where they debated, it seems like this big gap between Iowa and Oklahoma State is probably not that big. Yeah. It only take a couple of people to change their mind to swing, to swing how they stack up, I would think. I, I agree. And, and Oklahoma State made a six-spot jump. I mean, it, it's not like they're not getting respected at all. And they, they made the jump. They still have games with Baylor coming up. They still have, you know, some big games on their schedule. So there's no reason to get bent out of shape. <laughs> if you've actually watched this Iowa team, honestly, and it, not a lot of people have, but if you actually watch We watch them team, every weekend. Yeah, exactly. We're on our watching this team. <laughs> and if you watch this team play, you would not dismiss them as in, man, I can't believe Iowa got up there. But, but, no, but they Joey, deserve do you, do you to think be Iowa could beat uh, some of these teams? I, I realize Stanford yes. lost to Northwestern, but do you, you think Iowa could beat Stanford today on a neutral site? I absolutely do. Anytime as a football team you take care of the football, you run the ball between tackles. Uh, but I, I honestly do. I, I, you can make a, a much stronger case, I think, for teams that are sitting there at six, seven, eight, uh, than you can for Iowa. To me, uh, you know, Iowa's in the Big Ten. Uh, they're, they're, as Joey said, good, hard-nosed team. I think C.J. Beathard's outstanding. I think they're great against the run. Uh, but the one thing about Iowa, until they play Ohio State or whoever they play in a Big Ten championship game, you're, you're really not going to know how good or how deserving Iowa is at this point. Oklahoma State beating TCU, a team that Trevon Boykin was scoring. 60 on against everybody they played, and they couldn't get a first down. They were turning the ball over. They, they, that was impressive effort by Oklahoma State. And I just feel that like they were penalized because they were so far down. And what, what reasoning is that to keep them down? If it's, it's an impressive win, it helps their resume. To me, they should move up a lot higher than where they are this week at number eight. Well, you know what? Oklahoma State's going to have plenty of chances, and they get them all at Boone Pickens Stadium, too. So the Cowboys can take care of their own business coming down the stretch. College football playoff top 25 will move on. Urban Meyer raised the.